Ni hao, namaste. Now you might be wondering why I'm reading in many different languages. Well, this is to show that AI or artificial intelligence understands many different languages. AI is truly global and it can chat with users all around the world. Raise your hand if you have used ChatGPT or at least heard of ChatGPT. See, that's a lot of people in this room. ChatGPT is a very popular application that utilizes AI. Personally, I cannot write poems that rhyme, so I use ChatGPT to make it write poems for me that actually rhyme. Anyways, keeping aside my personal story, I know that there are people in this room who have never used ChatGPT and are quite unfamiliar with the word AI. If that's you, don't worry. I'm here to explain all about AI and tell you why it's such a big deal. So, so I'm going to tell you about what AI is initially and talk about the history and birth of AI. Then I'm going to talk about AI and its uses in healthcare. And after that, I'm going to be talking about a very special product that utilizes AI and this product I think can revolutionize the field of healthcare. You see, the story of AI is very interesting. I strongly believe that the story of AI is the story of humanity. So are you ready to jump into the first chapter? Yes. yes. Chapter one, the birth of AI. Once upon a time, to be more specific, once upon a time in the year 1955, there lived a group of smart people, the nerds, you know. They lived in Stanford University. They had one mission. Their mission was to create a machine that is more efficient and more accurate compared to humans. One of the men involved with this mission, his name is John McCarthy, came up with the word AI. He defined AI as the science and engineering of building intelligent machines. Now time has passed and technology evolved at a very rapid pace. Today, Oxford Dictionary defines AI as developing computer systems that have the ability to perform tasks that require human intelligence. This includes tasks such as understanding languages, translating between languages, and being able to make rational decisions. With this definition, you can see what we expect AI today to do and what scientists are working on when they say that they're working on AI. So now I'm going to be talking about one field that I really believe needs AI. That field is healthcare. I really believe that healthcare deserves to be its own chapter in the story of AI. Raise your hand if you think healthcare is very expensive. That should be a lot of people in this room. If you didn't raise your hand, congratulations. That means you're very rich. <laughs> but sadly, a lot of Americans find it hard to pay insurance bills monthly, and healthcare is very expensive. As a computer science student, I've always thought about how I can apply the principles of AI and the broader principles of computer science to help solve real world issues, such as healthcare being expensive. After reading a lot and researching about what scientists are doing in their field, I want to talk about a very futuristic product that I believe will revolutionize healthcare and significantly improve everyone's health. The name of the product is Smart Toilets. Imagine a world where toilets can talk to you. They talk to you every single day and tell you about your health every single day after analyzing body fluids. Very cool, right? We have smart phones, we have smart tablets, smart refrigerators, smart everything. So I strongly believe we need smart toilets too. You might be wondering, is smart toilets something that I made up? Is it something that scientists are currently working on? Or is it science fiction? Remember how I told you that AI is the science and engineering of building intelligent machines? Scientists are currently trying to develop an intelligent toilet that tells us a lot of information about our health. You wake up early in the morning. What's the first thing that you do? You go to your bathroom and touch your toothbrush to brush your teeth, right? 
So with smart toilets, as soon as you touch your toothbrush, it's going to recognize you based on your fingerprints and it's going to greet you. So let's say I'm touching my toothbrush and it's going to recognize my fingerprints, know that I'm a registered user of the smart toilet, and then it's going to say, good morning, Hasita. And then it's going to check for my temperature, my blood pressure, and my pulse. Let's say I'm feeling sick one day. The smart toilet will tell me, hey, your temperature is high, so you're feeling sick and you might wanna stay back home. Now I wanna talk about two very important features of smart toilets, stool analysis and urine analysis. You might be thinking, wait a minute, stool is just a fancy word for poop, and poop, ew, it's smelly and disgusting. But poop, along with being smelly and disgusting, also has a lot of hidden information about our health. With smart toilets, we're utilizing AI to ensure that we have access to this hidden information and that we're using this hidden information to benefit our health. So let's jump into how the process of smart toilets and stool analysis works. So first, the toilet is going to recognize you once you flush based on your fingerprints. And then it's going to break down the stool and look for the amounts of fats and amounts of sugar in the stool. I'm a foodie and I'm sure that a lot of people in this room are foodies too. So the smart toilet is going to tell you, hey, junk food is great, but it looks like you're having a lot of fats and a lot of sugar in your food. So you might want to tone down a little bit on that. And then smart toilets can also scan for viruses. Let's say one day you're very sick and you don't know why you're sick. You don't know why you're throwing up and having diarrhea. So the smart toilet is going to scan your poop and tell you, hey, you have rotavirus. That is the reason you're feeling sick today. It's always good to know why you're feeling sick and what's causing that sickness. Now I wanna talk about two features that I think are game changers. This feature includes being able to predict if you're going to get cancer. Smart toilets utilize algorithms, AI algorithms, to predict your chances of getting cancer in the future. So smart toilets look at your teeny tiny cells that are found in your poop, and based on these teeny tiny cells, they predict your chances of getting cancer. They look specifically for white blood cells. If your white blood cells are higher than what they should be, and if you have amounts of poop in your if amount of blood in your poop that is higher than what should a normal healthy body have, then the smart toilet is going to tell you hey, you have a higher chance of getting colon cancer in the future. According to American Cancer Society, sadly, 50% of cancers go undetected until the advanced stage. And 75% of cancers can be treated and can be cured if caught in the early stage. So now you can see why this feature in smart toilets is such a game changer. It's going to ensure that cancers get detected in the early stage, and it's going to make sure that your cancer gets treated before you get sicker and die due to cancer. Now let's talk about urine analysis. We're done with stool analysis, so now we're talking about urine analysis. The first thing that smart toilets check for in your urine is they check for the concentration and pH of your urine. If you're like me and keep forgetting to drink water, the concentration analysis will make sure that it's going to tell you to drink more water. It's going to tell you, hey, the concentration shows that you're not drinking enough water. Once it's going to give you a reminder to drink more water, you're going to now not forget to drink water. And it's a good thing that you have reminders now to make sure that you are adapting healthier lifestyle changes such as drinking more water. Smart toilets can also check for bilirubin and ketones in your urine. Ketones, if found in excessive amounts, are a sign of diabetes or prediabetes. Just like cancer, it's good to know and it's important to know if you have ketones in an excessive amount because you can get it cured and you can get it treated 
if they're caught at an early stage, if diabetes gets caught at an early stage. With bilirubin, bilirubin, high amounts of bilirubin mean that you could potentially have something wrong in your liver and your liver is not working as it's supposed to. Another important feature of smart toilets is being able to predict something as unpredictable as periods. Periods are unpredictable, but one thing they're not is they're not a taboo. So repeat after me, periods, periods, periods. <laughs> Good job. So all the ladies in this room know how annoying periods can get. And it's really good to know if you're going to get a period on this particular date, because there are women who play sports, and there are also women who are trying to get pregnant. Based on hormones found in urine, smart toilets can analyze and tell you when you're most likely to get your period. As I told you, periods are very unpredictable. So initially, when you start using smart toilets, the dates might be a little bit off. But as you use smart toilets for a longer period of time, it's going to get more and more accurate because it has more data about you and it's learning about you based on the data. This is called machine learning because it's learning from the data and it's going to make more accurate predictions. Another important chapter in the story of AI deals with the ethics of AI. There's some people in this room who are super optimistic about AI, but there are also other people in this room who think that AI is going to wipe out humanity. What I believe in is that whether smart toilets and AI in general helps humanity or hurts humanity totally depends on the way we use AI. It's important that we have the right type of regulations and we use AI in a very responsible manner. In our particular case of smart toilets, it's important that we know what we're doing with the data. It's important that third parties don't have access to the sensitive health information. The data belongs to the users and users only. If the users are fine sharing their data, then the data needs to be shared only after consent. For example, they want to share the information with their doctor, so then they can share their information after, after making sure that they share it and after signing the consent form. And if they don't want to share their information with healthcare providers and insurance companies, then they don't have to. I know that this TED Talk is going to outlive me. If you're watching this TED Talk in the year 2050 or 2060, I really hope that smart toilets are going to be in every single house. I hope that you're watching this from your smart toilet thinking, dang, there was a time when there were no smart toilets. Smart toilets are so insanely helpful. If you're in the audience today, thank you so much for listening to me. The next time you're visiting your toilet, think about how toilets can be so much more because of AI. Your poop and your pee are not just useless, stinky substances. They can be so much more with AI. So think big and stay curious.